It was a cold morning for the start of the final racing section. Overnight leader Jeremy Davies again led the bike brigade away with plumes of dust over the beautiful Lesuji countryside, a clear indication of the route taken by competitors. Parts of the early morning route were on good dirt surface roads, with riders belting along at speeds of around 160 kilometers an hour. While back at the start, Richard Schilling and Fred Levesque had been elevated to first car away status. Does it worry that Degan is uh, way back but uh, going to be charging? I think it's a big gap he's got to make up. If he gets through, all credit to him. But uh, we did it on the two out of thousand and uh, we very much want to do it again today. With three victories this season, a powerful motivating force, Schilling and the best were quickly into their stride. But with Robin Gates and Nardis Oberts hot on their trail, and Degener determined to make up the hour he was penalized, it was going to be a long and hot day for Schilling and Levesque. John Lambert and Jack Purchase had been steadily moving up in the field in the ex-Derek Pinoy car, and had suddenly emerged as a major threat. There was high drama when German rider Jochen Sauer crashed head-on into a spectator truck. Sauer was picked up by ambulance and later airlifted to hospital with suspected back injuries. The beautiful Lesotho Mountains looked tranquil and provided for some magnificent scenery. For Errol Dalson, admiring beautiful scenery was the last thing on his mind as he battled with some brutal tracks. American Fritz Cadillac was still batting on despite gearbox problems. With Heinz Kindergartner suffering mechanical problems and other overseas riders crashing, Cadillac held on to finish ninth. Willie Ireland was also having a tough day, and when he crashed out of the event, there was plenty of noise from a gallery in the middle of nowhere. Matters were turning out a little better for Richard Manning on the Winston Yamaha. He went on to finish fourth overall and win the 200 class in a tremendous performance. From one kind of horsepower to another kind, as Joe van Altenaar went around in circles looking for the best route. Joe won't see 50 again, but finished seventh overall and second in class in another typical van Altenaar display, which saw him teach the youngsters a trick or two. Bontekun and cut a lonely figure on the mountains as he also looked for the best route where there's no road on his way to 10th overall. Despite engine problems, veteran Harry Roscoe had taken charge of class 9 in the Protea playing card race code. Roscoe was to finish 9th overall. Alfred von Furen and Piet Pelzer improvised some additional air cooling for their Toyota Hilux on their way to yet another win in Class 5. Johan and Ferdi Peterser took Class 10 after a steady and determined drive in the aging Orco. There was late disappointment for Class 4 leaders Stratford Vogt and Cory Durant. Late in the event, the steering broke on the American-developed Kilo Engineering Toyota, and they were forced to call it a day. There was plenty of excitement at the finish, when Richard Schilling and Fred Levesque roared home to take the checkered flag. For Schilling, a dream had come true after 20 years of trying to win the route. Schilling and Levesque looked exhausted as they cracked open the bubbly. In a great performance, John Lambert and Jack Purchase came through to take second ahead of Philip Malum and Richard Leake. Needless to say, Schilling was delighted with his first roof win. Were you ever passed today? No. That, I think that was the most difficult thing today. The strain of not only having to drive as quickly, but mentally to pace yourself. Because, you know, both Bux and Robin and Klaus are very quick and you don't know how far you hit. So you just got to... Keep on pushing, pushing, pushing. 
There was drama in the bike category when Jeremy Davies got lost on the final section. This left the delighted Alfie Cox a comfortable winner, although he is showing the strain of three days of racing and the toughest possible conditions. What a bikes. Well done, Alf. Hey, it was a long and hard ride. And the marking was very bad, and you could have thrown the whole race away by getting lost. Like this morning, Jeremy had a bit of a lead on us, and uh, he stopped for some reason or other. And I got a, a lead, and I was quite a way ahead, and took a wrong slot. There was a guy parked the car on the marker on a turn, and he didn't even show me the right way, and I was, went, got lost. And Patrick and uh, Jeremy passed me again, and in a little while longer they got lost. And I've got a lucky break, and I've just been going as hard as I can. The hapless Davies had to be content with third place behind local hero Patrick Andrews, with the star, the Sutu son, Ruth of Africa, again living up to its reputation as one of the toughest events in the world. Tough it may be, but the competitors will all be back next year.